Hello again, everyone. We are still in chapter six, and I wanted to take a moment to say more about that inner circle of roadmap, uh, which we've spent quite a few years developing in collaboration with quite a few people, and for which I was given a big boost early on by none other than Marshall Rosenberg, the founder of Nonviolent Communication. And the way we think about it now is on the background of the spiritual tradition, where they say, uh, we have to have a balance between contemplation and action. Now, this balance will differ from person to person, some more contemplative, some more active, but uh, I'm firmly convinced that in the present age, the idea of going off to a cave in the Himalayas or uh, maybe a Vipassana retreat somewhere, and for your whole life, and doing the best that you can for society from that venue, I don't think is realistic. If anybody could have done it, it would have been Gandhi, and yet no one was more active than he. 15 hours a day, seven days a week for 50 years. Uh, so we, call, we break our five points down into breathing in, the, the part where you work on the influences that you're taking in, and breathing out, where we work on the influences that we're having on the world around us. First, on our immediate relationships, and secondly, on culture as a whole. So uh, those first three, we've spoken a little bit about the first one, which is be very, very careful about the imagery that you take in. The second one is to spend as much time as you can afford learning about nonviolence. And uh, we would add today, learning about nonviolence in the context of what we call the new story. I'll be saying more about that in a little while. The third step is mentioned here in Search for Nonviolent Future, and that is to, if you don't already have one, take up some kind of spiritual practice. Because if the mass media have exaggerated our tendency to gravitate towards violent imagery, uh, in our mind, it's not like they invented it. There was a lot of violence before there were commercial mass media. And so we have uh, almost an evolutionary inheritance of these fight or flight patterns and as human beings, an evolutionary inheritance towards compassion, cooperation, and justice, service of one another. And we need to get in at a very deep level and create an automatic flow, or if you want to call it that, a decision-making process that will shunt most of our energy towards those positive avenues. And remember, early on in the book, we talked about an experiment done in 1952 with school children, the Davids experiment, that showed that children can be trained to even process negative energy, like frustration, into positive channels, like constructive program. So more about that in our next episode.